Manchester is celebrating their 150th anniversary and they're doing something pretty special. Winchester Repeating Arms and Winchester Ammunition are partnering with the Buffalo Bill Center of the West and they're showcasing 10 historic firearms from the long history of Winchester. But here's a few fun facts about Winchester that maybe you didn't know. Did you know that Oliver Winchester was actually a shirt manufacturer? The original magazine pistol patent was patented in 1854 by Smith & Wesson. Uh, Smith & Wesson was trying to develop a repeater, but their focus was on the self-contained metallic cartridge. Unfortunately, their magazine pistol patent couldn't fire that cartridge, so they sold it to shirt manufacturer Oliver Winchester in 1855. He worked with several designers and, of course, turned that into what we now know as the Winchester lever action. Now, we know about the Winchester lever actions, but not as many people know that Winchester made revolvers. They actually made several iterations of revolvers and pistols throughout their history, but not really commercially successful. In the 1870s, they made a series of revolvers that they worked with a, a man named Wetmore and Wood, and they actually made one of the first swing out cylinders that they had. But those were all sold overseas. But the big drama that everybody likes to talk about is the 1880s. And that, of course, is when Colt uh, took the Burgess patent, which was a lever action. They created the Colt Burgess, a lever action rifle from Colt. Well, as kind of a tete a tete, Winchester then, with William Mason, developed their double action revolver that looked mysteriously like a Peacemaker. The way the story goes is that Colt and Winchester made a gentleman's agreement that Colt would stay out of the lever action business if Winchester would stay out of the revolver business. Now they did make several bolt action pistols that again weren't commercially successful but they did make several revolvers in the latter half of the 19th century. Now of course the not shocking part of this history is Browning and Winchester. I mean we almost associate those names as, as synonymous. Well Browning actually developed this 1878 single shot and Thomas Bennett went to over there, saw Browning, paid him $8,000 for that initial patent, and that started the relationship. Well, John Browning stayed with Winchester for a long time. Unfortunately, though, when they were marketing the 97 slide action shotgun, John Browning had uh, come up with his semi-automatic shotgun, and when he took it to Winchester, he asked for a little bit of a different deal than they originally had. Winchester declined that offer, and Browning and Winchester would sever ways. The semi-auto would go to FN, and of course, it's the Browning A5. And then Browning and Winchester would not directly work together again, but Winchester does get the BAR contract, and so it's the last time you'll really see the Browning-Winchester connection together. The other thing that you may not know, when you think of the M1 Garand, you know, uh, General Patton called it the greatest battle implement ever devised. Well, Winchester actually produced a series of them. Winchester was initially asked to review the M1 Garand and came back with less than favorable results, and so they started hiring a series of designers to create their version of a better M1 Garand. Well, at the same time, they ultimately get a contract to make the M1 Garand, and they do that, and they make a lot of them throughout history. Now, finally, my last fact about Winchester is that it gets really confusing after the 1930s. The 1930s, Winchester uh, goes into receivership, and John Olin buys the company. The Olin Corporation buys the company. And we now know the Olin Corporation better as Winchester Ammunition. So when you're talking about Winchesters in today's society, Winchester Ammunition and Repeating Arms are two different companies.